Hello everyone. It is, I should be writing number 530. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty, and this is my Halloween background. I don't know why I need to announce my uh, Halloween background, but I did. Hey, K. Kimmy, how are you? It's good to, uh, it's good to see people. Hey, Seat, good to see you. Sybil Rose, hope everyone is doing well. Sarcasmatron 5000. Welcome. Hi, Collectorian. New faces. That's exciting. So, um, yeah, the Halloween background is always worthy of note. I have uh, been having some insomnia issues lately. And I'm not really sure why. Consciously. I'm sure my subconscious is still, you know, running around screaming because of 2020, but... I'm not like waking up and thinking about specific things. I'm just waking up. So I'm a little out of it today, which is bad because just like recently I did a stream where I was had a migraine and, and was dealing with stuff. So I really am mostly focused on this show. I really, really. Hey, Primalina. Hey, Kit. But um, I have a deadline, so I did manage to get some writing done. Uh, someone wrote me to correct me on talking about For the Words, the RPG site that I told you about that's very influential to me um, in that it, it if I'm thinking about fighting monsters and stuff, yeah, what is this focus you speak of? Um, if I'm fighting monsters and stuff, that, that gives me a weird little incentive to keep writing. And they said I was wrong because you can write in... I said, you have to write in the browser. And they said, you can write in Scrivener and paste it in the browser, which is true. But I feel that that kind of, for me at least, it negates the power of the site because all of your challenges are timed. It's either write this many words in this much time or uh, write continuously for this much time. And so if you write it somewhere else and then paste it into the browser, it's going to say, wow, you wrote 2,000 words in two seconds. Well done. And I don't know. You can do that. I just didn't bring it up because I don't find that incentivizing at all. That's not, that doesn't feel like taking part in what the site is trying to do. And so it would just feel like writing in Scrivener. So, um, it was a good point that you don't have to write in the browser, but to get the incentive of fighting the monsters under a time limit, um, I feel like I have to. Um, hey, Underpope, how are you? Hope you're doing well. There were some other comments. Uh, got some other emails. Should have had this pulled up already, but of course I didn't. Um... Where is it? Sorry. Uh, reading Natalie's thing about the, about the four of the words. Um, you can still get the, the loot drops if you do, if you write in Scrivener or somewhere else and then drop it into um, for the words. And if that is incentivizing to you, then, then go for it. And it prevents some of the weird formatting quirks and extra backup. So those are all those are all good points and good reasons. Just for me, I'm like I have found the endurance battles where I have to keep writing or else I lose hit points. I it's really working for me right now. I was not feeling great this morning, but I realized I had a deadline, and so I pulled up a couple of those endurance monsters, and actually managed to get about a thousand words down before the podcast. Um, so a couple of people suggested to me that you want, you do want to pad the words. You pad your, sorry, that whole problem of, of starting, of going live. Um, regarding NaNoWriMo and my comments about it, uh, a couple of people said you want to do um, front load your words, which I 
have suggested. Front load the word count for if you mix, miss days later on. Um, so people have suggested that. Also, one person pointed out that encouraging you to take a day off, and you want to front load your words for that, but knowing there's a day off coming might help. So, um, those are good points. And I think that's it for comments. I want to announce again, I'm going to be in the, um, at Mile High Con this weekend, virtually. Still bummed about that. Um, because not only was I looking forward to going to Denver and actually going to a convention again, uh, I would get to see Cory Doctorow and Rebecca Roanhorse and Connie Willis and... Anyway. Uh, hey, Talkie Meat, good to see you. Doing spiffy, that's great to hear. Um, so yeah, it's it's getting closer and closer to November, and that's... That's terrifying, really. But I have uh, a deadline coming up, another deadline, so I think that's going to be my main NaNoWriMo focus, and when I finish that, I'll just focus on something else. Um, Kit is doing the Rebel thing this year, working on revisions, but I try to figure out a method of tracking that will motivate me. That's a good idea. Um, what kind of tracking motivates you? Uh, a lot of people have problems with tracking revisions. Some people track it by page number, but a lot of times revision is take a paragraph and spend 10 minutes reworking it, adding and subtracting words to make it sound better. And then you look and your total word count is minus 37 and you've worked for 20 minutes and you just hate yourself, even though you know that you did work. So, um... When we were doing the magic spreadsheet back in the day, the way we tracked revisions is... Oh, hell, I can't remember. It was like an hour equals a certain number of words. So if you get an hour of editing done, you can claim like 400 words on the spreadsheet. Um, Underpope's also doing revisions this year. Primalina says, as someone in Denver, we're sad you won't be here. Speaking on behalf of the city, thank you. Thank you. I was hoping to, uh, never been to Colorado, so. Uh, Seat says, I'm thinking of shelving my main work in progress and trying a sister book concept I'd thought of for Nano. Uh, Collectorian, yeah, I usually hear people do it by hours spent or page, pages revised, yeah. Because, I mean, I like tracking things. I like, even though, the problem with, with revisions is you don't know how far along you are. Because it looks like you're halfway done with the book, but it turns out that chapter 27 won't need very many rewrites, and you had to completely rewrite chapter 16, so does that mean you have less time left in the book if you've... Yeah, so it's, it's all... I, I think that's one thing I hate about editing, is that you can't look at what you've accomplished and know how much you have left. That's actually a reason why I don't like e reading ebooks. Because I, I'm not always, like, reading the the percentage underneath. And there's been more than one time where I've finished a book and not realized that there was nothing else. The book ended abruptly, and if I'm reading a physical book, I get that feeling of, wow, I wonder how, if they're going to be able to tie this up in the next three pages. They're still not tying it up. I'm betting there's going to be a lit end on a cliffhanger, etc. And then, but reading... Uh, the ebook, it's just, oh, it's done. How, how is it done? So, um, that's a little tangent there. But I feel the same way about edits. It's just so hard to know. It's hard to, to estimate how long it's going to take you. That's the problem. The real problem I have, because that is actually something pro writers need to know. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, like I said, I had insomnia, so my brain's moving a little slow today. I can, uh, we can talk about you guys come up with topics. Um, I think someone asked me in the Discord before we started, um, advice to, advice, somebody wants advice on 
Ah, yes, it was talking meat. What to do when you've written yourself into a corner? Not to think that's a thing that happens to them, of course. Of course not. Um, so when you've written yourself into a corner, I really try to go by the, the thinking that there are no wasted words. And so what you've done, hey, Paul, good to see you. Think about it like Thomas Edison. What you've done is you've found a place that your story's not supposed to go. You've figured out, okay, here's one way not to make a light bulb. Granted, you're going to have to back up and point your car in another direction to... I'm all about mixing metaphors lately. I don't know. And that may be tough to figure out where exactly you took the turn to get into the corner, but don't don't hurt yourself trying to get like through the wall i mean maybe back up and write in another direction make your main character make another decision bring in another supporting character who perhaps adds to the scene and lets the plot follow them or a variety of things but don't if you have to back up you're going to have that feeling and by you, I mean me. You know, we all think our experiences are universal, but I think it's a pretty common feeling of I had to delete, you know, 3,000 words in order to fix this problem. But if you think no wasted words, you think I found a direction my book's not supposed to go. And now that's information I have that I didn't have before. Now I know that, that if the main characters try to start their romance too early, it's gonna, it's not gonna work out. Or if the villain reveals themselves too early, it's not gonna work out. And so you just accept that you have learned something about your book and back up, try a different direction. Try to find that, uh, that sliding doors moment. Did you ever see that movie where, uh, it's a, a multiverse type movie where Gwyneth Paltrow is running to catch a catch a subway and in one iteration she catches the subway and the other one she gets caught the doors catch her before she can get on and she can't get the subway so um the and the entire movie like diverges and and one per she it, it's a very different story for each person and all because of the sliding doors so you need to find your sliding door moment where okay well my story just completely you know comes to a halt if i go in this direction so i'm gonna have to find that point where a different choice is made either by your character or yourself so that is what i think about that hopefully that uh gives you something to work off of. If you have any other questions following up, if you're still watching, um, happy to elaborate. Uh, Seat says, when working with a story on multiple main characters, fanti fantasy uh, three-ish, any advice on what point it might be better to split into separate books? Wow. I can't speak from experience. I've never tackled the epic concept. Um, I don't know. The most, I think you need to think about, does your story have a beginning, middle, and end? And maybe, well, probably not. All of your characters have a satisfying ending. They need to come to some ending. You know, the, even if the ending is the war, the battle's done and they're gone. Or um, they entered the room and never came out. Or, you know, it's not like, oh, they sat down to have a cup of coffee. And then you don't never write about them again in that book until, you know, the next book when they get a telegram while they're drinking coffee. I'm, it's hard for me to, to improvise plot points live, but... Um, just make sure, and, and I don't know, I might go for word count too. You know, if you're getting up above 
110, 120,000 words, you need to find a way to think, what is the main topic of this book? And tie it off. And, you know, check out other fantasies to see how they did it. Um, unfortunately, Martin comes to mind because that's the one everyone's read. And I would not recommend doing what he did later on in the series. I believe book three was super late. And so he took all of the POVs out of... Uh, never read Martin. Okay. Um, well, he took... Like, three was too long, so he took half the POVs out and then made what a lot of people think of as the best book of the series. But then book four was all the POVs he took out of book three. And it was really boring. I found book four tedious. It brought in POVs of people I did not care about. And it, it, I think it advanced Sansa's plot and that's it. So, but you haven't read it. So the point is moot, but that's the thing that like, I think he might've had, your problem of too many POVs, the story's getting too long, where do I end it? Um, yeah, I, I can't speak from experience, but I would say just try to think about what is the main conflict of the book and does that... Uh, is it resolved? And resolve it. Quantity versus quality? Uh, okay, Kimmy, can you expand on that? What what exactly do you mean? Um, okay, Talking Meat, I'm glad you're you're happy with that answer. Um, yeah, the, the the figuring out how far to back it up is the challenge. In in figuring out where to have your sliding doors moment. But yeah, I mean. In reference to the Martin example. No, I understand that. I didn't understand. I mean, are you saying, like, he wrote too much and picked out all the good stuff but didn't throw away the bad stuff? Or, um, I mean, yeah, he does, he... A Song of Ice and Fire does kind of follow the the uh, rolling and to some extent the Stephen King thing of once they get super rich and super successful the editors stop editing out the bloat which is why Harry Potter is like this thick and book seven is like this thick and Stephen, Stephen King's Carrie is like pretty much a novella and then now he's writing books this thick so, um, stuff like that, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think sometimes it's just, you throw a bunch of balls in the air and then you realize you're juggling way too much. I think that's one thing that, that intimidates me about fantasy. One of my favorite pa fantasies is, um, the Sunrunner series by Melanie Ron, and, that pretty much has one main character, lots of POVs, but one really main character. But um, I remember being intimidated by one of the books because she outlines uh, one person doing very, very clever assassinations in order for a completely, you know, good, well-meaning royal family who's not, like, in conquest, but there's this woman working on her own, assassinating key people all over the land so that it'll all come under the prince. And the... just the politics that's, that's you know, very carefully manipulated under the um 
you you don't get you don't know until the end of the book and you don't even know these things are connected it's like oh well here's some news about this and we're gonna have to include that under the holdings here because you know oh it's very sad this person died and and it's not even the main plot of the book but it is like when you find out what she did it's just mad respect for the political maneuverings that I've never really been good at and I feel like a lot of epic fantasy has got to have some sort of politics involved because a lot of it has to do with the changing of ru rulers. Um, catching back up in chat. If you've ever read Wheel of Time, that was kind of my thought structure-wise. People in separate storylines, but doing things related to overarching problems. <laughs> Actually, I haven't read Wheel of Time. So, um, unfortunately, we're not following each other's examples. That's unfortunate. But yeah, epics are, they're intimidating. It's really, um, it's hard. I should probably get Matt on here to talk about it because the Savage Legion is, no, Savage Legion, there's no the, is first in an epic trilogy. So I do ditch diggers with him almost every week. So I'm, um, Never think about having him on this show. I probably should talk about epic fantasy. I'll also write that down. I can read that. Sure. So how many people in chat... I guess I'll say who's not doing NaNoWriMo, because I'm assuming the majority of you are. Because I feel like coming up on November, all of my talk is about that. Um, uh, Silent Wolf says not officially. Phased Out is not. Um... Sorry, I've never done it via the actual website, just track it myself. I'm psyching myself up to try, but I don't know if I will. I'm doing the craft mode, does that still count? Um, I'm curious, see, why don't you do it via the website? Um, oh, hey Tom, uh, if you do, you'll do a screenplay, not a novel. Uh, silent, I'm a consumer, <laughs> well, I know that phased out. <laughs> Um, consumer, not a producer. Collectorium is a mun municipal liaison for my, uh, region. Talking meets not because of unfeasible pile of marketing. Ugh, day job. Paul's not. Okay, a lot. Some are. Doing Jay Thorne's five-day plot your novel. That's something I haven't seen. Um, if something comes of that, then I'll have my outline. That's from Cheshire Pope. Good to see you, Cheshire Pope. Um, uh, Seat says, I don't really have a good reason to. I just never looked into it. Is there some reason to use it? There's, there's not. I think the actions of being part of the site and having people follow you and updating your word count every day and getting badges and having buddies and all that is what the website offers. And the forums, which I don't go to. But if none of that is exciting to you, then sure. But um, I see a lot of that as a bonus. Like to, I remember a couple of years ago, I was trying, I was thinking about it in September, and I wanted to get on the site and start like working on my user, in, in my uh, just my user page, and they hadn't updated it, and they weren't going to update it until October. And I'm like, that's too close to November and it's not but um but yeah I like I like the the that that adds to the feeling of camaraderie for me but you know you don't have to of course not if you tell me you wrote 50,000 words in November it's like congratulations for winning NaNoWriMo uh, another suggestion for uh plot your novel Hi, Fida. Is that Fida or Fida? I'm not sure. 
I plan to give it a try, but I've started an MBA program, so I'm not sure how much time I can dedicate, and still trying to narrow down my project ideas. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the, when, when, like, other projects that demand your time interfere with your NaNoWriMo goals, it's kind of sad, but it happens a lot. It's happened to me a lot. Um, so what are the municipal liaisons doing right now? Because you can't host anything in person. Are you, like, are you getting trained in Zoom? Or are you just getting advised to, you know, have virtual write-ins? Good luck. I know that my, my municipal liaisons are flooding my inbox again. Um, my NaNoWriMo inbox, not my email inbox. And... They're having virtual parties and write-ins and stuff, and but that feels like a different sort of organizational stuff. But I'm still fussing about the fact that virtual cons don't give me the feeling of regular cons when it's better than nothing. So yeah, I uh, people have a lot of different. Uh, plans. Our region is doing a combination of Zoom and Discord. We're all doing virtual this year. Every region's ML got to decide how they want to do it. For my region, I went with Discord. Um, what are you doing with Discord? I've got that... Sorry, I bumped my desk. I've got that feeling of I'm not using Discord as well as I should be. That, that feeling of uh, it has a lot more capabilities. I know it's got video and audio chat rooms, which I may use. And you can tie it to Twitch because I've been in somebody else's Twitch stream by connecting with them on, ditch, on Discord, but I've never actually run it myself, which I might be doing for uh, the virtual write-ins for NaNoWriMo. Uh, Collectorium, we're doing three write-ins a week, normally do in person, using the audio-video option, plus can chat between events to discuss writing. Yeah, that's a good plan. A bot for running sprints and word wars. We have a lot of fun with the bots on the I Should Be Writing Discord. A lot of fun. It's, um, it's, we've got two, actually, and they're... That, that that helps with the incentive thing, too. Some of the bots people write for Discord are amazing. I'm definitely getting that old person's feeling of, wow, the internet certainly has added a bunch of bells and whistles that they didn't have back in my day. My kid's been on Discord since 8th grade. <laughs> so, and it took me a while to get up to speed on it. She was telling me she was running a role-playing server, and I'm like, Thinking of servers as, like, one computer, like a web server in a server room at a company. I'm thinking, how do you have your own server? Anyway. But, um, I think I might set up a Discord for, I should be writing for everybody. Uh, right now the Discord is Patreon supporters only. But if I want to do the virtual write-in on Discord, I'm going to have to make it open to everybody. So, um... Uh, see, I use Discord, but I'm not actually in any writing ones. If someone has a link, I'd like to join. Um, uh, Fida just joined Discord last night. Didn't realize it was so popular. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's it was it was definitely gaming focused for a long time. So that's who I think that's who they marketed to, and that's who flocked to it. So if you weren't into gaming chat, either role-playing or uh, video gaming, then it shouldn't have, probably wasn't on your radar. Um, by Thursday, I will have a NaNoWriMo Discord set up. I'm writing that down, too. I took my notebook out of this room because I'm smart, and now I'm writing on the user guide for a uh, piece of equipment I just bought. So I've got this little user guide and it's got a whole bunch of notes on front, except it's really bright and you can't see it. 
but you wouldn't be able to read it anyway because my handwriting's terrible. But yeah, that's my notebook for now. And I'm probably going to lose this and forget everything I wrote down. No, I'm not. I'm going to take it with me downstairs once we're done here. I'm set. Dream Foundry has a great writing-related Discord server. Cat Rambos is pretty good, but it's Patreon only. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Cat Rambos. Whole lot of good things. I should probably join her disc her Patreon so I can steal all her ideas for Discord. I mean, follow in her footsteps. She's amazing. I love Cat. Don't 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 get me wrong that I'm running off to steal from her. Uh, I can't steal from her if I'm giving her money via Patreon. I just realized. I love this. I'm getting so many ideas. Thank you. We call it taking inspiration. Yes. Yes. It's not stealing. It's homage. It's pastiche. It's anything but stealing. Yes. So does anybody have any further questions about writing, writing related things, NaNoWriMo? Um, because I will be back on Thursday. Oh, you asked how to pronounce my name. People say Fida. I wish I could change it, though. Couldn't figure out how. I don't know how on Twitch, but if you tell me what to call you, I'll try to remember. Always to call it, please research, says Kit. Thank you. I like that one, too. Um, does anybody have any Halloween plans? I mean, it's a bad time of history to do Halloween, and it's depressing. But uh, if you have any kids, my sympathies are with you and your kids, because it's depressing. Uh, Tom Lehrer, yes, under Pope, good point. Writing, uh, yeah, indulging in some Tom Lehrer about research. <clears throat> Plagiarize. We are setting up games and a faux trick-or-treating thing in our backyard. What's a faux trick-or-treating thing? That's neat. Really, Tom? Tom Lehrer released all of his lyrics into the public domain yesterday? Oh my god. That's amazing. Wow, I'm sorry, that blew my mind. He's Tom Lehrer is a fascinating individual. He, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Tom, just let me know, but he's, uh, he worked at Harvard, works at Harvard? Is he still teaching there? Um, teaches, like, math or science, and just decided to write these brilliant comedy songs, some of them straight parodies, some of them, actually, were there any, there weren't any parodies, he does parodies of, uh, different kinds of music. He's got like a folk song and a and a ragtime song and um Oh, UCSC? Okay. He he's got a song about Harvard, so I didn't know. I think he taught at Harvard when he wrote that. And the thing is, uh he's a retired math teacher. Yeah, yeah, I hope he's retired cuz his albums were recorded in the 60s, I think. So he if you've heard the uh Elements song to the tune of uh, I'm the very modern of mo model of a modern major general, the, the element song, that's his. So um, he wrote these songs, he recorded the albums, people loved them, and we've got one of his live recorded albums. And apparently he did a couple of shows and then he stopped. And he's like, why do you want me to perform live? You can buy the album of me performing live. He just, like, stopped. He stopped writing the songs. He stopped performing. He just... We just have these brilliant songs. Hysterical songs. And he just didn't see the need to keep doing it. And, uh... Which is not an approach to a creative life that I want. Uh, again, my friend Devo Spice, the fump in the chat, is, uh... 
probably knows more about it than I do because he runs the Funny Music Project. Um, okay, back to Trick or Treat. I'm sorry, I'm just gobsmacked that, like, Tom Lehrer's songs are in the public domain. I can, like, I can quote them before chapters of my books. That's awesome. I have to find some that will fit, I guess. <laughs> sorry, it's very exciting. Um... Oh, if, if you guys are, are anybody in my generation who watched, uh, oh crap, what was it called? The School, Schoolhouse Rock. He did, um, the song L.Y. and he did, crap, did he do anything more than L.Y.? I'm not sure. I know he did L.Y. He was on Dr. Demento a lot. L.Y. and S.N., What's S-N? Anyway, back to the faux trick-or-treating. Our plan is to have foot various cups pinned to our wooden fence in various places covered in tissue paper with candy inside each one for the kids to go get. That is really clever. Because you gotta do lots of... Yeah, you gotta do lots of clever things. I know that... I mean, there are many reasons my daughter chose the school she's going to, but one of them was their approach to Halloween. And I don't know if she's, if they're going to be doing a lot of the things that they do. Because pandemic, yay. Um, SN on Electric Company. I watch Electric Company religiously and I don't remember that. Huh. Anyway, LY was one of his. Anyway, I, I just, now I want to go listen to Tom Lehrer and just think all of this is, why did he, why did he do it? That's another thing. It's like nobody... Except for maybe Cory Doctorow or Benjamin Rosenbaum would just release their stuff to the public domain. No, I love the Tom Lehrer rabbit hole. It, it applies. It's it's a, ve a, a very creative man doing creative things that nobody else does. And some of them not normal for creative people in our day and age. I mean, even Cory Doctor and Benjamin Rosenbaum use uh, Creative Commons, not public domain. So, the fact that he's made all sorts of other weird decisions about his career and performing and releasing albums is, you know, that makes sense. That he would just be like, okay, have it, have fun. <clears throat> Rabbit hole, great. Now I have the bunny song bit from Once More with Feeling in my head. Uh, sorry. Sorry, phased out. <clears throat> wow, that's, that's just very exciting. So anything else anybody wants me to cover, um, I'm going to be looking into a Discord for Thursday. Um, I might check out Five Day Plot Your Novel, and I'll talk to Matt and see if he wants to come on, although I'm not really doing interviews on I Should Be Writing right now. Partly because it took a long time. I was, uh, I mean, this is months ago, obviously, because I've been doing it on Twitch for since the summer. But for a long time, I was not having just the spoons to do I Should Be Writing. And the idea of recording was monumental to me. And the idea of organizing an interview, <clears throat> excuse me, an interview with somebody I knew, much less a new author with a new book that I was going to have to research and then schedule and then record was way too much for me to think about. And, you know, I was not recording regularly and I was getting close to pod fading. And doing, moving to Twitch and doing this live has... Um, I don't know about you guys, but it's definitely breathed life in it for me, and I'm much more excited about it now. Unfortunately, the idea of bringing interviews back on is a little much. Um, but Matt's a special case. He's a good friend, and uh, I record with him all the time, so I'll see. I'm saying this out loud because I've actually told several publicists that I'm not... Ooh, we have... we have a... Oh, man, I moved the thing. Why did I move the thing? Dang it. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I moved my alert down and then I couldn't see who followed. Sorry, I was just, I'm so excited my alerts are working now. And anyway, whoever just followed or subscribed or whatever, thank you. Sorry, I was not uh, ready for that. Apparently, I moved some windows around and anyway. Um, sorry, yeah, so I, that that's kind of why I'm, I've told publicists that I'm not doing interviews right now when they ask me to interview one of their authors, so then I feel like I'm making a liar out of myself by bringing Matt on. I'm really going through way too much sort of inside baseball of the podcast with you right now, and I apologize for that. <clears throat> we are talking a lot. Wow. Okay. Phased Out's going to go slaughter innocent polygons with a bow. Peace out. Good to see you, Phased Out. Um, you got to tell me what you're playing next, because I don't remember. And now I want to slaughter innocent polygons with a bow but I'm working on a magic user in Skyrim and it's really hard because as everybody knows low level magic users are crap um would it be a separate discord it would because one of the, one of the things people like most about the patreon is the discord and so uh I'm keeping the main discord patreon only just because that's that's a that's a perk I want to keep for um Patreon supporters, so it would be a separate Discord. Um, Kit says, kind of a random thought with the Archetypes book, disconnect the archetype completely from gender. Yeah, I have thought of that. Um, it's hard because many of the archetypes are so closely tied into gender. I mean, like, Aphrodite, the Aphrodite type is the femme fatale that, that manipulates men, and the uh, Athena type, the businesswoman, is proud to be a strong woman in a man's world and believes that men are stronger than women. She's just above all other women and supports the patriarchy. And I mean, it's like, it's more than just the gender connected to the archetype. It's, it's all tied within. Which, sure, in a binary world, they do fit, but in a world where not everybody's binary and um, there's not everybody's straight, it's it starts to fall apart. So y you you can make your own thing. You can do the wiggle room thing. You can have people who try to toy with the same sex, the way the femme fatale does with men, or um, or anybody really not not just the same gender and yeah you you can have the the yeah it it the, i could just ramble on about this because i guess yes there is wiggle room you can come up with obviously cuz i still love the book i still get a lot of use out of the book but that is my one concerned that that you have to if if this kind of thing concerns you and it probably should because there are people in the world who are not who don't fall into those neat little categories and if you want your writing to reflect the world maybe think about that but you know I, I go to the book for information not information that I'm gonna have to manipulate so that's why I keep complaining about it but uh Okay, there's the thing. Thank you for following Writer Greg. Okay, that was the that was the little ghosty thing that that I missed because I had the wrong, the window was too far down. Uh, Cheshire Pope. Side note: Plot your novel started on Monday, but you can hop in any time this week. The steps are pretty straightforward, and he gives you a template from his three day story method workbook. Oh, it's not a book. It's like a workshop or something. Tell me more about it. I just assumed it was a book. Um, which is funny because I just discovered there's, um, I thought it was interesting that two of you were doing it at the same time. Wow, you're both reading that, that craft book at the same time. Mm. Okay, Kimmy, I love being able to comment in real time. Thank you. I love it too. Uh, Sarcasmatron, love Matt, reading Savage Legion right now. Excellent. Um, Kit... 
So you could have a story where both Hades and Persephone are men, or a story with a female Hades and non-binary Persephone. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for following, Greg. It's interesting to see the background of the podcast. That's very kind of you, because I feel like it's, uh... Yeah. I see it as, like, my neuroses of... of trying to figure out how to juggle this. I was bothering uh, Devo Spice before this because he's a creative person who's also running a, a number of projects like The Fump. Um, just about how he approaches some things because I still don't fully feel like I have a whole handle on it. Or I feel like I Should Be Writing could be a lot larger and, and do more, but I would need help. And I don't know what to ask for or who to look for. So it's it's all very, like, just running around in a dark room for me. Eventually I'm going to hit a wall, but, you know. Uh, hey, maybe Lavender, Stealth Archer for the win. Yeah. I am developing my archer, archery skills in Skyrim simply because... I've always loved the bow, and so while my magic skills are still low-level crap, I'm doing archery when, you know, my piddly little ice spell won't reach that far. And I really don't want to get up against an orc with a big sword. Okay, so five-day free plot your novel workshop using his three-story method. Uh, say again who this is? Uh, Underpope has to head out, pick up a cat from the vet, hope the cat is well. And lovely to see you. Thank you for dropping by. Um, he teamed up with Plotter Software and is taking people through plotting their novel before NaNoWriMo. If you join and submit an outline, then he has potential prizes. That's really cool. Jay Thorne. So, um, again, I don't think we can do uh, links in the chat, but Jay Thorne, five days to plot your novel, looks like a reasonable... Um, a uh, uh, search term. Go save the cat under Pope. Yes, K. Kimmy. Good, good callback. Well done. Oh, see, thank you for supporting on Patreon. <clears throat> so yeah, that's cool. See, that's the kind of thing. Like, would I want to run a virtual workshop or a real life workshop or things like that? And I just like. As I just explained to you, the idea of organizing interviews on my show again is a little much for me right now. And, like, I'd love to do those things, but I don't know how to... All the admin. There's a lot of admin. There's already a lot of admin in my life that I never expected. And that would be adding more. Um, so, yeah. What I've always said is if you are a podcast fan from back in the day, um, Scott Sigler teamed up with uh, A, that that's all she goes by, A Real Girl, and A is his business manager, and she's basically been his right hand in building his Sigler empire, and, you know, she does the organizing and the admin and you know, he writes the books. And I've always been jealous of their connection because I don't know, I've, you know, not known how to find my own A. But anyway, um, had to sign up for it, never used it before. Well, I appreciate it, see, I do. Um, Kitty is always priority, definitely. I gotta take the dog to the vet just for a recheck. He's fine. Uh, later today, in about an hour and a half, actually. So... I should probably sign off soon. Again, uh, my name is Mer Lafferty, and this podcast is called I Should Be Writing. It's live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash mightymer on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 12.30 Eastern Time, around 12.30. I'm bad with being on time to things. Um, and then if you want to uh, get it via the podcast feed, just search for I Should Be Writing and, or go to merverse.com and then you can get the this feed 
video and audio on a couple of days later. If you join the Patreon, you'll get it the day that I record the Twitch stream. So, um, that's another bonus you get is early episodes if you miss, miss the live stream. Um, I write books. I'm, I'm not one of those people that wants to advise you on writing and never actually have done it myself. I do write books. Those, that information's at Merverse.com too. I should say Merverse.com as well. Um, I've written a book for Star Wars. I've written a award nominated, an award nominated science fiction book. I wrote a middle grade book. Do a lot of books. And um, I'm co-editor of Escape Pod. So if you like free science fiction stories, you can get those every week at escapepod.org. And I will be at, virtually at Mile High Con this weekend. So if you feel like going to a virtual convention, check out Mile High Con because I don't know if they have a cap on memberships, but you can, you can go anywhere in the world. You'll just be on mountain time, but still, you can go anywhere in the world. Thank you to people who email uh, suggestions and stuff in. Thank you to the chat. Thank you to people who were watching and not chatting. I appreciate the lurkers as well. And um, that's right. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so on Patreon, patreon.com slash Mighty Murr, where you can get access to the Discord and the early episodes. Or you can uh, support at Steam, not Steam, Twitch. Too many purple gaming focused things i swear sorry steam is actually blue try to blame the colors it always always messes up when you try to blame the colors so anyway thank you all hey chromag thanks for watching uh thank you for being there thanks for coming okay cunning um always good to see you guys in the chat and hopefully i'll see you on thursday and if i have my ducks in a row i can get not only the Discord setup, but if you do bang Discord, the bot should tell you how to get on the Discord. I know that's a possibility. I just got to figure out how to do it. But I need to go finish my word count for the day and then go to the grocery store and then to the vet because you guys need to know how exciting a pro writer's life is. So I need to go get some words done and you probably should too. Until then, you should be writing.